Japan is a very unique market. Every company strives for perfection. Uh, out of the 100 companies which are more than 100 years old, close to 50% of them are based out of Japan. So you can understand, people strive for perfection. They are not looking for very short-term gains. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Pratish Sanyal, and you're listening to The 1% Project. Conversations that will help you understand how some of the smartest minds build, scale, and operate new ideas and ventures. If you enjoy these conversations, do share and subscribe. My next guest on The 1% Project is Prasun Chaudhary. He is the operating partner of Oyo Hotels Japan. He joined Oyo in 2015 and as a founding member, first headed Oyo's expansion in South and East of India, then in Nepal before landing in Japan. Prior to Oyo, he has spent a significant amount of years in corporate banking and strategy consulting. Japan is a unique market traditionally and culturally, making a market entry for any foreign entity intriguing. We kick this conversation off with Prasun on how he navigated through Japan's traditional mindset to launch Oyo Japan. Let me answer it in two parts. First, Oyo and then Japan. So as I said, I have been with Oyo for a long time now, pretty much from the initial days. And again, it was just my excitement, my my pretty much... I wanted to work for a startup to see how a company is built, how a company is grown, how a business is built. That was always one of my key motivators of joining a startup. Uh, and that's how... I was looking to work with startups and that's how I came in touch, came to Oyo. I think I was lucky to join it very in the very early days because the eastern part of India, then the southern part of India launched Nepal. So did all of the, built all those businesses, recruited a lot of people, built new businesses. So you get to see how a company grows, you get to see how a business has grown, the challenges of it, building, having that patience to build it phase by phase, while you also need to show growth. So all of those combinations has been a great learning journey. I think 2018-19 is when I started expanding globally. We, we had built a decent business in India and our partners, our owners, hotel owners were um, seeing the value what OYO was adding to their business, seeing the value how OYO was as a full stack model was helping in managing, giving them new technology, managing, helping with them operations, getting demand. So it was a full stack mode and that's where we thought, let's let's go global. And Japan was always on the cards because as you know, SoftBank is one of our key investors and has always been a great supporter of OYO. And that's where we thought that as, as OYO was expanding globally, Japan also was a very important market for us. And I was lucky enough to be given this opportunity to come to Japan, build the business in Japan. So that's that's the first answer to the first part. Coming to the second part, yes, Japan is a very unique market. Every company strives for perfection. Uh, so just to give you some data, if my numbers are correct, out of the 100 companies which are more than 100 years old, close to 50% of them are based out of Japan. So you can understand, people strive for perfection. They are not looking for very short-term gains. They are looking how to build a company, how to build an organization for long term. So that's why it's a very, very unique market. As I said, everyone strives, strives for perfection. Very high culture values very high values in terms of how is the product working if there are any challenges it has to be built and uh, made perfect for the partners for everyone so i think uh, these are some of the challenges uh, customization the product has to be localized and customized because um, as a language Jap- uh, japanese is the most uh, prominent language used across business across every place so you have to customize your products customize your technology to make sure it is it, it is well suited for the end user and our partners. You had built Oyo within India as well as in Nepal, and obviously you have built uh, quite a strong team in Japan. One thing I would like to understand: what kind of people you see to be a great fit within Oyo? I just uh, kind of look for two three things very basic. First is curious. Is he really um, curious to understand new things, to explore new things, um, not taking things as it is, questioning, trying new things. So I think that I always look at. Second is uh, his ability to change. Startups are very, I would say, while it sounds very great and everything, but 
change can happen very fast change can happen very fast and you have to be ready for that change we try some model it does not work we cannot be too emotional about it we just need to change things and move on try something new work on it uh, while the basic model always still exists but when you go to new markets you have to be ready for change so i think that is the second thing i see how much he is eager to change how curious how curious he is to understand understand things and my third is 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 common across other industries as well that you have to be ready for you know a long it, it it's a tough job so you have to be ready for some kind of sacrifices because of the uh, long hours because of the amount of effort which needs to be put in it's not just a yeah to put it very bluntly it's not just a 9 to 6 job so you have to be pretty much into it to build a business so i think i primarily i look for these three things how w- difficult was it or easy was it for you to actually find the right talent within japan because as you mentioned people there are very devoted to their companies and they have like hundreds of years of legacy so how difficult was it to actually for you to bring people within japan into your team and i'm assuming startups are something of a new concept within japan as well very very good question very good question i think yes this was the most difficult part of my job to build a team when i landed in japan and when we talked of building teams it always came out as the biggest problem in japan and second as you said people are really very devoted to their companies they they want to work for their companies for as long as possible so it was very tough again and uh, japan after landing we understood it's also a very recruitment based market so it's not typically you know reaching out to individuals to to individual candidates is not something very common in japan everyone come, wants to come through a recruit recruitment agency so i think that makes your job easy as well as tough as well that means you may not be able to find talents uh, through linkedin and to other sources very that's not a very common practice but uh, easy in the sense then you just have to find the right recruitment agencies right partners who can work for you so we also worked with few recruitment agencies and where we understood that these two or three are people who really try our understand our culture understand what kind of candidates we are looking for i think once that was done you know after a few months they understood and then they were able to get the right candidates and obviously in these cases all of us are in startup everyone is a sales person that's that's the way i can take it as a as a person who started the japan operations i landed here the first day without you know we we didn't even have a company at that point of time i came here and we we, we established the company and everything and then we started hiring so everyone is a sales person i am a sales person in the sense i am selling my startup i am convincing other people to join it and that's what all of us do uh, in a startup you have to when you are meeting partners you are explaining them the importance of oyo or how a full stack model would help you when you are meeting guests you are explaining them how oyo is very different and you should try our app how does it work and when i'm meeting candidates i'm really convincing them motivating them to join a oyo to see how it's a great growth opportunity the same things very honestly the same things which i felt about a startup is that if you want to experience building a business if you want to see how a business grows if you want to understand the challenges of growing a business this is the right this is the right place for you and i think that is the way you also find the find the right fit because if someone is not Uh, too excited about what you are saying he or she may not be the right fit for i mean for this company uh, you, we all have to move on i think so that's the way i build the company using uh, recruitment agencies and explaining them what our model is and then meeting as many candidates as possible it's about basically that became my full time job for the first 3 4 months literally my full time job that's that's the only way possible would you say that the oyo model has disrupted the japanese hospitality industry or it is a continuous innovation process that oyo has implemented i think in japan it's a combination of both it's a combination of both japan as you as you you understand as i said everyone strives for perfection so the hospitality industry is also quite well developed it's it's one of the best hospitality industries across the across the globe that is how you would say and it reflects in the prices it's it's typically one of the highest adr markets i think us japan uk these are one of the highest adr markets that means people are ready to pay that means there's a value for that uh, that money which cons- consumers guests pay so but the other thing we also realized is when you go and meet a lot of budget hotel owners across japan across osaka fukuoka nagoya multiple cities when you go 
there are also a lot of owners who are uh, quite old and uh, running their operations in a very uh, stable manner for a long time and if if i can use uh, there's still a, a, you know in some places technology can be innovated technology can be improved in the in, especially in these kind of hotels so we try to work on that part we are still innovating i would not say that it's all done i mean we, there's a long way to go so we are still innovating trying to work with them that's the way we kind of approach the problem the second way was also to make sure that people understand that it's a full stack model it's not just about one part of it so for a partner it's about getting all the benefits of just uh, you know with one technology with one company they can be rest assured that all their other issues will be handled the ota will be handled the operating system is given by oyo and uh, the direct demand comes through oyo so all of these things is handled we 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 help them in setting some operating standards which are already great in japan but trying to get few more things which can be improved that's the way it was a combination of all of this i would say uh, we have been trying for the last one year or so one and a half year or so and also trying to innovate as you rightly said so there is a brand there is something called ryokans in japan ryokans are more like hot water onsen baths are there and you have a hotel where you can go and with family have those baths have dinner good long course meal and we 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 wanted to see how this can be improved or the how a new brand can be made out of this which is more appealing to the millennial as well as to the outside world and we worked with them to launch a oyo ryokan brand as well so yeah it has been a combination a journey and learning innovating and the journey keeps on the journey keeps on oyo as a business is in emerging markets as well as in developed markets like japan yes so how do you see the contrast between these two markets when you look at consumer side or implementation side very very good question i think a uh, few things few things to put put into the perspective i think consumers in both both these markets and that's what we are feeling at least that is what we the data also suggests is that consumer is looking the new millennial consumer the new generation is looking for value for money second they are more about traveling exploring rather than you know yes there is also that uh, thought process of enjoying the room and enjoying the the facilities but it's more about exploring it's more about going out and trying more new places visiting more new places so i think it what it brings it to the value for money quotient across the globe has has increased compared to what it was few years back that is one thing uh, second we think the more and more millennial travelers uh, what you call if you make so call the budget travelers is increasing every day is increasing every day because people are travel uh, people have started traveling at a very early age and a lot of them prefer to travel alone or with few friends so i think that is also a trend which we see that is also a trend which we see so this is common across uh, across across all the all the markets coming to on the other side of the industry which is yes the developed markets the hospitality the technology the cons- the consumers expectation are much more different than what you see in the emerging markets uh, there is difference in, in both of them and we 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 have been able to quantify some of them we are still exploring others to uh, not to not it should not be too theoretical but more in terms of how it can be executed in, in terms of few actions taken and it could be as simple as saying you know how do you change your app in a developed market and how do you see it in a different way in an emerging market like what are the important things which people look at it how the how does the adrs function in a developed market compared to in an emerging market in some markets the bookings are made much in advance like cities like tokyo london the bookings are made one two months in advance while in a, a lot of other cities the bookings are made just like one or two days before the actual check in so that's the way we we segregate uh, different markets we try to quantify them based on the key parameters based on the key consumer trends and also the owners expectation that's the way we have been working as you grow and build in a new market there are some best practices and you would have adopted something from nepal some from india from some from japan are there any best practices from japan that have been uh, used or shared with other markets or similarly other market practices coming to japan yes yes absolutely we keep learning from each other uh, that that has been one of the core uh, of oyo from the day we have started building when we were in india we used to learn from 
each other region and when we have grown globally we are learning from each other the other nations other countries and that's 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 uh, certainly a part of it so i think one of the key things which something which comes on the top of my mind is sop manual documentation is very very important in japan so it's it can't be just lying all over here and we launch something everything you build you need to have a sop for that everything you do you need to have a manual for that everything you need to do you do you need to have a documentation for that that is very very important and taken as a bible in japan so i think that is something which we learned when we landed uh, in japan when we were building the business while we had a lot of those things but putting it in a very formatted manner in a very standard manner uh, visiting it revisiting it every few months is very very important so i think that is something which we built in japan and it it has been used across other other markets as well in a very because it helps them if if for no one else at least a new joiner can just go through it and he he can understand the entire everything about oyo so i think that is something which we uh, which we learned which comes on the top of my mind there are there are multiple other things which we are learning slowly and we we, we would want to take it to other markets while from other markets as you said there are multiple other things which we are learning like um, in london as i said booking some made much in advance now how do the how does the consumer trend look like that and i think Uh, some of the changes which we have done there how can we implement it in uh, tokyo as well especially for the tokyo market so i think that's the way we have been learning how do you make sense of covid and its impact it's huge <laughs> it's huge <laughs> and it's very very detrimental uh, nevertheless nothing nothing less than that i would say the hospitality industry has really gone to 10 12% occupancy the airlines are shut down which is very closely linked to hospitality so yeah it's it's very very detrimental for all of us the, the tough part is we 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 all are still not sure when everything is going to come back to the normal people are still thinking about it uh, the covid cases sometimes it goes down and we still see countries where in like india brazil um, the cases are still uh, coming up in large numbers so it has a very detrimental impact the occupancies have tanked up uh, we have to make sure that we we work closely with our partners to make sure what are some of the value addition things which we can do even in these tough times like uh, like in, across the globe and even in japan we have launched sanitized stays so there is a proper format there's a proper process sop made for to sanitize all the rooms to sanitize the hotel because we feel a lot of guests will feel more comfortable we think and uh, that with sanitized stays that yes the hotel is sanitized in a proper way the rooms are sanitized so you have to look for those those small innovations uh, those innovations which we can be helpful and just hope that uh, things are coming back to normal and it uh, bounces back sooner than what we expect there is a lot of talk about the hospitality industry and how it will be transformed post the pandemic do you agree with these predictions or do you see that things will go back to as it was as previous to the 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 covid situation and how is oyo preparing for it good question no i also feel that there would be a a tectonic shift if i would use that word it is it is going to be very different the new normal will be very different and if i can you know just give you a very small example a very uh, is that most of the people now prefer takeaways even in restaurant a lot of people now this is a very we, all of us are seeing even in hot in in our our hotels where we go there is a restaurant and outside restaurant they say that takeaway is possible a lot of a lot of hotels actually encourage that in japan i go to a lot of restaurants and they say if you take if you if you order for a takeaway you get a 20% off now that's a huge shift where people wanted uh, where the restaurant owners wanted people to sit in their restaurants and eat and drink to go with a takeaway is a huge shift so yes it is going to have a big shift i'm very sure about it there will be very very interesting innovations coming in like i would feel that uh, every guest would want to have a no touch check in check out like they would not want to have physical interactions too many if there is a technology where they can come in check in check out and they don't have to really there is just someone standing there to guide them that's it they would not want to have too much of human interactions uh, given what is happening second they would really want to see something around sanitization that how is this room being sanitized what is the process what is the sop i think these will some of the which which is coming on the top of my mind and which i see being changed family travel i think still may take some time because uh, people would be 
very skeptical or because typically you are very um, careful with your family with your kids so you will wait for some time before you move on start traveling that's the way i i see things changing and it will also depend on when the airlines start working back because hospitality is very very close dealing with the uh, with the airlines i also feel that um, the overall prices the adrs will go down because it's a very simple demand and supply equation that means if the demand is not going to be very high in the next a few years and it will take time for the uh, occupancy to come back to the pre covid normals that means that there will be a there the, the the prices will see a correction that's the way i can i can see it summing this conversation up how do you see oyo in the next 5 to 10 years 10 years is too long a time oyo is just itself 6 7 years you know obviously we 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 are building a company not just for few years we we all of us uh, very very have a very strong feeling that we are building a brand which will exist for years and years to come which will be a global brand which is already a global brand but more and more partners will come on our platform and more and more guests will use oyo as their primary uh, way of booking and staying in hotels so that's the way we want to build the company and that's the way we want to build the brand all of us all the leaders are quite uh, motivated quite committed to do that in the next few years as i said at least for the next few months and years we see the demand to be suppressed and it may take time for the pre covid levels to come in but that said we also see a huge opportunity is that whenever something like this happen the economy section of the demand the budget section bounces back quite fast compared to uh, other 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 uh, sections of like the where where you really go and stay in very high luxury. end property yes high end property luxurious section i i think um and that is a great opportunity for oyo because uh, we we play primarily in the budget segment on the economy segment and you we will see that to bounce back pretty fast compared to other other section other segments a book or a blog that has transformed your way of thinking personally and professionally i have read a lot of these autobiographies and i always feel very excited reading them like made in japan by akio morita made in america by sam walton an autobiography of lee ayokaka i think these kind of books really motivate me a lot because they it's like a journey of someone from his early days how he fought through how he built a business how they how he or she really uh, struggled across their journeys to build a business and then you understand that it's not just a sprint it's a marathon it's a long journey so you have to just be focused perseverance is the key and so i think i i like those kind of books and as much as possible I read those things to motivate myself that it's a long journey at the end hard work and perseverance will pay off one thing that you have learned from ritesh during the covid period or you see in ritesh which is very admirable the calmness the equanimity with which he thinks and bluntly at the end oyo needs to survive the company needs to survive the company needs to company is here for long term what is that everything what we do is he thinks about is it good for oyo is it good for our customers it is good is it good for our partners that's it if if this is the answer is yes this uh, it's the right decision i think uh, that's ca- that calmness to think in this these tough times the equanimity is is really commendable thank you prasun for your time it was lovely speaking to you thank you thank you thanks for your time and thanks for having me on this on this conversation You can find the show notes for this episode and every other episode on 1%.live. If you enjoy this conversation, share it on social media and leave a review. See you next time.